What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I'm back home, and I'm here with another Omnibus Haul. We ended up with a nice stack of books here, so we're going to jump into these, tell you what they collect, do some overview shots of the artwork, and more. Before we get started, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, and let's get into it. Uh, first of all, Marvel was kind enough to send us five trade paperbacks early. All of these books come out August 5th, and uh, we'll take a look at them now. The first one up is the Oz Complete Collection. This is written by Eric Shanower and uh, illustrated by Scotty Young. This contains Ozma of Oz 1 through 8 and Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz 1 through 8. So it's almost the same material as the Omnibus, but it doesn't have as much. The Omnibus is like 900 pages, and this collects 16 issues. This has a $16 cover price. Let's take a look at the Oz Complete Collection. Which, by the way, it is a little bit smaller than your typical trade paperback. Let's take a look at Oz. Alright, so here we go. The Oz Complete Collection. Kind of like a little manga-sized trade paperback here. You see the Scotty Young artwork. I've heard great things about this run, but I mean, I've had the Omnibus since before I started the channel, and I still have never picked it up. Um, it seems like a fun kind of book, though. You know, I mean, obviously it's a take on Oz, and uh, you have... Scotty Young artwork throughout. Typically, he's known for being a cover artist or a variant artist. Uh, but this is the first book that I really remember him doing the interiors for. I don't know if he's done more. I know he's writing Strange Academy now, which is pretty uh, interesting that he's not the artist on it. Humberto Ramos is. But anyway, uh, I hear good things about Oz. It sounds fun. It sounds like something maybe my kids would be into or even Fee maybe. But uh, the complete collection is coming out in case you didn't want to splurge for that omnibus. Like I said, only 16 bucks, and you get a lot of content here, right? You get a nice little thick trade. That's Oz for you. And actually, my mistake, the Scream Trade paperback comes out the following week, August 12th. I thought it was super cool to get the Scream Trade because, if I'm not mistaken, uh, issue 6 hasn't come out yet. So this contains 1 through 6 of the current ongoing screen. This is by Clay McLeod, Chapman, uh, Chris Mooneyham, Gary Brown, and Ryan Barreto. This is pretty much like the only thing that's still happening, uh, which is a direct result of absolute carnage. So I really like this. You have um, a new character as Scream, the original character, uh, which was the Scream from the 90s. She's no longer here. It's now Andy, who was Mayhem, if you remember her from the Rick Remender Flash Thompson run. This is still ongoing, so this is just the first arc, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, you have a little bit of uh, Aunt May in there with her feast shelter, and you have Andy there. Uh, so I like how we're still kind of playing in that symbiote world. This is pretty much the only symbiote book going on besides Venom. So this trade comes out, has a $17.99 cover price. Let's take a look at the artwork on screen. Colin Bunn did uh, a three-issue miniseries during the events of Absolute Carnage, and then, surprisingly, she got her own ongoing afterwards, which I was pretty stoked for. I always liked the Scream character. I always liked the Andy character, the Mayhem uh, character. So I was all about it. So uh, here's the first trade for it. Artwork here is incredible. You can see the Null stuff on the Scream symbiote. Like I said, 18 bucks collects the first six issues. And this is a title that I'm actually still reading now in single issues. I talk about it during the new Comic Book Day reviews. Uh, I don't think I've ever given any issue a bad review. Ties in a little loosely with the Null stuff. This mother thing was pretty crazy and creepy. Symbiote mother that was underwater. There was kind of like these underwater symbiote zombie type creatures, which was pretty cool. And I really do like the Andy character. There she is with Aunt May, so you know, tying in with some Spider-Man stuff. Uh, I, I definitely think if you're a Symbiote fan or Spider Spider-Man fan, you should pick this up, man. I'm digging Scream. Next up, we got the trade paperback for Punisher Soviet. This is the Garth Ennis run uh, with uh, Jason Burroughs, uh, Guillermo Ortego, and Nolan Woodard. So uh, anytime you have Garth Ennis revisiting the Marvel Max world of Punisher, I got to jump in here. And this deals with this other character, Valerie. Uh, and, and I really do enjoy. I really did enjoy this story. I read it in single issues, so you guys have seen me review it weekly. The trade is now coming out with a cover price of seventeen ninety nine. We'll flip through and look a little at Punisher Soviet. All right, then we got Punisher Soviet. Right, Garth Ennis doing Punisher. You can't go wrong. I really like this guy. He was badass. This is a Max series, so expect some vulgarness and some violence. Uh, this was a six issue miniseries, eighteen dollar trade paperback. And it's what you would expect from a Garth Ennis Punisher book. 
It's not the most raunchy one. It's more of a more serious tone. Uh, you have, you know, a mafia storyline here. Mafia wife involved. This guy, uh, this older guy, I think his name, I don't know if you pronounce it Valerie in Russian, right? It is, they call him Val. Maybe it's, Val- I don't know. <laughs> Let me stop. But anyway, um, more of a serious tone Punisher book. But for six issues, if you missed the single issues, you might as well cop the trade. Explicit content. Don't let your children watch or read. All right, then we have the Captain Marvel. This is a volume three trade paperback. This is the Kelly Thompson run. You have Lee Garbett, uh, Francisco Man- uh, Mana, and Tamara. Uh, bon- I know I probably say that name wrong. Bone Villain. Bone Villain. Is that how you say it? Anyway, uh, I'm not reading Captain Marvel, and this is the third trade, so I don't think I'd really be able to get caught up. I think I read like Star Number One, which I believe is a new character that came up out of this run. Uh, I know some people enjoyed this run. I see it in other comic book reviews. I just never really picked this one up. But let's flip through together and take a look at uh, Captain Marvel. All right, Captain Marvel. Like I said, Kelly Thompson on the book. This is a run that I'm not reading. Uh, I know my man Rock and Robbie Billups is digging it though. Eighteen ish, uh, eighteen dollars issues, twelve through seventeen. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on in this run. Unfortunately, you know, reading this trade is not going to catch me up. But if you're Reading this in singles, or you're reading it in trades, this is Volume 3. Some Black Panther stuff going on there. She-Hulk stuff. Ghost Rider there. Goes Captain Marvel. So, oh, I like that cover. And Hyuk Lee has been killing it lately, man. That kind of reminds me of the Jajaric wraparound cover. Anyway, Captain Marvel coming out soon. The last trade paperback, this is the Savage Avengers Volume 2. Still haven't read this. I think I ended up picking up Volume 1, but I think Fee might have given it away in a gem crate. This is Jerry Dugan's run with Patch uh, Zercher, Kim Jatinko, Ron Garney. I always just looked at this like this was the Conan version of the Avengers. Uh, I hear great things. A lot of people say in my reviews uh, when I do the weekly comic reviews that I should be reading this. I just haven't caught up. This contains issues 6 through 10 with annual 1. Also, uh, actually, this is a $19.99 cover price. Last but not least, Savage Avengers, Jerry Dugan. I know everyone's telling me I should be reading this. He got this cool uh, Doom Conan cover. What do we got going on here? Issue 6 through 10, I already talked about that. $20 trade paperback. You got Strange, Doom, Conan, some kind of monster on the back. Volume 2. I got to see if I still have Volume 1, man. I think I, I think we did give it away. But I hear great things about this run. This was like the first series that I really re- recall of Conan coming into the Marvel Universe. I'm not sure if his own series came out like kind of like side by side with it. But here goes the trade paperback. Looks like there's a little bit of extras or so on the back here. Variant covers and such. But Savage Avengers coming out August 5th. All right, let's get on to the hard covers. So... When I started getting into Berserk uh, and I was asking for other recommendations, everybody was talking about this Helsing book and then also uh, Dark Horse was doing a deluxe edition for it as well. So here it is. This is a $50 book and it contains, I think it's like the first four volumes. So this is actually uh, a run that's completed, unlike Berserk, which is still ongoing. So there's going to be three deluxe editions to cover this entire run uh, and that's it. I've read the first chapter. We'll look at it together, and we could even go over the chapters. Uh, this is by Kota Hirano. It's a little bit of a different feel than the Berserk. This one feels like more leathery, where Berserk just kind of looks leather, but has a different kind of texture. But I love the uh, breakdown of these mangas. I- I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, I just need to find the time to read it. So let's flip through Helsing uh, right now. All right, so the Helsing Deluxe Edition. This is Volume 1, $50 book. I did uh, start reading this, but then I went out of town and I got a little bit behind. But uh, I like the construction of these Dark Horse Manga Deluxe Editions. Now, I left this on just for the video, but personally, I like to uh, peel the stickers off mine. Same with Berserk. Let me know down in the comments below, do you take the stickers off or not? So, it does have a ribbon for a bookmark, which is cool. Uh, you have uh, basically a hell sting is like an operation that hunts vampires, and then we have uh, our main character Alucard, which is like the head merc. Right? Here's the contents. It looks like the chapters are much shorter in this book 
So you have, what is it, 27 chapters of Helsing, which I believe is the first four volumes. And it's what you would expect out of a manga. This one is dark and violent, I hear. And, you know, everybody recommended it to me. I think maybe even before uh, this deluxe edition was announced, everyone was saying, if you like Berserk, you're going to like Helsing. So I'm definitely going to read this and give it a review. Uh, from what I understand, there is an anime for this as well. But I don't know really much about it yet. i got to finish reading the first book. All right, next up, we got a Marvel omnibus that has been stuck in transit forever. This is the Morbius omnibus. And, man, I was too slow to try to get that DM cover. So I got the regular cover. Usually I always try to get the old school type of cover. But I was caught slipping on this one. This contains a bunch of stuff, starting with his first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 101. So you have his stuff from uh, Marvel Team-Up, from his own Living Vampire series, Vampire Tales, like magazine-type books, uh, The Living Vampire, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, She-Hulk stuff. So you have a slew of creators and titles that Morbius featured in. A uh, pretty smart move, considering the movie with Jared Leto uh, has been announced, and we've, we've seen a trailer. This book has a $100 cover price. Uh, let's flip through some of the artwork and uh, check out Morbius, the Living Vampire. Fun fact, he was called the Living Vampire because of the Comics Code Authority. Didn't allow for any undead or vampires or things like that. So that was kind of the work around there. All right, try not to be too disappointed about missing that DM variant. But here's the regular cover, Morbius, the Living Vampire. Uh, this book does have a square bound spine. Not the hugest fan of that, but what are you going to do? It does have all the covers on the back, which I'm really a big fan of. And like I said, Amazing Spider-Man 101, 102. Then you have his team-up stuff, Vampire Tales. You have um, Giant Size Werewolf, Marvel Preview, Marvel Premiere, a bunch of different titles. Uh, pretty much just a compilation of Morbius's greatest hits. Like I mentioned, $100 on the cover price. You have some graphics on the front here and on the spine, very similar to the dust jacket, all black background. Let's take a look at this. Got a red cover on the inside, just like Helsing. All right, you got a little what it collects here in the beginning. Very dope artwork here. Shout out to David Gabriel. Uh, we got the the creative team, a lot of Roy Thomas stuff, Jerry Conway, Steve Gerber, Mike uh, Friedrich, Don McGregor, Doug Monch. I know he did a lot of the uh, Shang-Chi stuff too, right? 70s uh, Marvel stuff. Yeah, it looks like this is all stuff from the 70s. Well, 71 to 81, so 10 years of Bronze Age Morbius. Introduction by Don McGregor here. Those are always interesting to get some... Uh, to get more in depth about these characters in the process so you go your amazing spider-man stuff also collected in amazing spider-man volume three six arm spider-man with the lizard jumping into some marvel team-up stuff the man morbius the living vampire so he got his own run that looks dope Then we're going to get into like this magazine format stuff, Vampire Tales. And you got Morbius included in there and some black and white. Must have been, you know, popular in the 70s with these Marvel kind of uh, magazine style comics. Back to his ongoing series. I guess it goes back and forth. Probably chronological as how, how it came out. Look, Fantastic Four cameo. Thing in Morbius. And then you got some She-Hulk stuff as well. Let's see what we got in the back here. You got some house ads featuring Morbius. That's pretty cool. Huh. Get 
Get some pages from Amazing Spider-Man, some covers, very cool. Nice Treasury Edition covers. Those are those big oversized magazine styles. McFarlane Marvel Tales reprint cover. Cool, man. Next up, we got the Superman Batman Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, I ended up selling my Absolute Editions when this was announced. I read both Absolutes before I started the channel. And, uh, I mean, it's okay. It's Jeff Loeb uh, writing this. You had a lot of Ed McGinnis stuff on here. But then there's other creators like Michael Turner, like Ethan Van Skyver. I remember not really loving this story or the artwork. It's a little cartoonish, a little almost like animated series-ish. Um, but I couldn't really remember to, what the story was. So let's flip through it together. We'll see if I could remember what was going on. I know there was some dark side stuff in there. But um, otherwise, it was pretty forgettable for me. This omnibus does have a $125 cover price, and it collects uh, Superman, Batman 1 through 43, plus the first two annuals, uh, and Superman, Batman, Secret Files, and Origins 2003, issue number one. This is pre-New 52 stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, here goes the front of the dust jacket for Superman, Batman. This is volume one. So here's the creators that are on this book. Like I said, Jeff Loeb, Ed, uh, Ed McGinnis is really who is most notable from this run. Who? Uh, here goes the spine, and here goes the back. Book 25 on the cover price. Collects a ton of issues here. It goes the inside of the dust jacket. And you have a wraparound cover. And you can see Ed McGinnis gives it a very much like an animated series type of vibe. Which is funny because I, I do like the animated series, especially Batman, I mean a lot. But I just remember reading this run and like I said, it, it's just, it, for me, it was a little bit forgettable. So let's take a look at some of the artwork here. I think Ed McGinnis only did like the first eight issues or so. I always liked Ed McGinnis more on Hulk or even like with his Deadpool stuff. I believe you have, uh, what, the return of Power Girl here or a new Power Girl. We've got some Nightwing action here. You also get what's uh, arguably the first cameo appearance and the first appearance of Batman Beyond in DC continuity in issues 22 and 23. Well, what happened was is Superman Batman Annual 4 is cited as the first appearance of Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, in DC continuity. But he shows up in issues 22 and 23 here, but they call him Tim. So you almost think it's Tim Drake dressed up as Batman Beyond. Then later on, DC said, no, that was a mistake. It was supposed to say Terry. So it's kind of like, oh, that that was the first appearance of him in DC continuity. Let me try to find that issue real quick. Yeah, there it is right here. So, I mean, either way, it doesn't matter. The first appearance of Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond, in comics is Batman Beyond number one. This is just kind of like how Harley Quinn is first appeared. Her first appearance is Batman Adventures 12, but her first appearance in DC continuity is the Harley Quinn, uh, Batman Harley Quinn graphic novel. Anyway, I thought it was kind of funny. They have Ethan Van Skyver stuff in here as well. <laughs> so, dope artwork as always, though. Let's see what we have in the back. A lot of covers. Some sketches. Cool. All right, last up. This is a book that I almost missed. I happen to see somebody, I think maybe in the Facebook group, Geminites, Post this. This is the Aliens vs. Predator Deluxe Edition or Library Edition from Dark Horse. Back in the day when I first started the channel, I did the review on the two Aliens books, the Predator book, and the Terminator book, which looks just like this. This is part of that set, except this is a yellow book. It's got the gold trim pages, and it's the original comic series of Aliens vs. Predator. So super cool. Uh, I like this kind of... Uh, I don't know if it's late 80s, early 90s comic run. The artwork is great. I think it's cool to kind of have a um, a comic book version of these movies. And yeah, it looks like it's 1990. This has a $45 cover price. Let's take a look at the artwork and the construction of the book right now. 
All right, I really love these oversized library editions. I love this 90s artwork here. Aliens vs. Predator, the original comic series. You got Randy, Stardley, Phil Norwood, and Chris Warner. Here goes the spine and the back. What does this collect? Oh, we'll have to see inside. $45 cover price here. And like I said, you got these gold trimmed pages on the top, sides, and bottom. So, just Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator War Part 1, and that's it. These were originally released in these very smaller, like, manga-sized trade paperbacks, kind of like that um, Oz um, trade I showed you guys earlier. Here goes the artwork, though. Definitely digging the artwork on this. Look at that Alien Queen. Some predators fighting. Space. Very good artwork. I love this is this is up my alley, y'all. Gonna have to read this and knock out a quick review. I always like the Alien vs. Predator movies as well. I love the mixing of franchises like that. I think that's so cool. This looks like the trade paperback artwork. Yeah, from the first trade collection. Some sketches as well. Very dope, man. Yeah, these are the other books I was talking about. These four up top. All right, guys, so that's the haul for today. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Like I said, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're almost at 90,000 subscribers. I think at the time of filming, we're at like 86.3 or something like that. So appreciate everyone watching it. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. We drop videos every single day, plus impromptu lives or clips from our lives, which have been actually doing really well. So hit that notification bell, and if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like. Uh, make sure to stay tuned at the end for playlists on more omnibus hauls, and stay minty fresh. Peace.